It's casual, not formal. It's hosted by Rory Pendlin. Oh, and Renee in tow. It's time to start the show. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Everybody. Uh, welcome to It's Casual. Uh, this is show number 81. Um, uh, we've, we've had a lot of shows and we've had a lot of interesting guests on the show. Um, and we were, we were ready. I mean, we were ready for Jason Scott Lee. Um, uh, his Facebook messenger, uh, he answered me. He agreed to come on the show. Um, and unfortunately, he hasn't arrived. <laughs> and people were texting, hey, we're waiting for Jason Scott Lee. Where is he? And uh, unfortunately, um, he's not here. Uh, and this this is something that, you know, we knew could happen. Um, and I hope that he's okay. Uh, wherever he is, uh, in Hawaii or L.A. Or, or wherever he is, I hope he's fine. Um, I um, hope that uh, he can pop in for the show. I'm, I'm hoping that if not, that uh, he will reschedule. He'll contact me and we'll reschedule and try to do it again later. Um, uh, this happened with Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's son. Yes, it happens. It does. Uh, this was quite a while back, though. That was about a year ago. This is over a year ago that that happened. And I suspected at that time that that was going to happen. I, I wasn't as as leery this time. I, I mean, the red flags were not there. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, again, we, we knew that it could happen. We, we had a contingency plan. We had a plan B, um, and, and I'm very happy that it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Uh, let's bring up Renee. Well, let's say plan Z, because it's not like this is a, an inferior plan. Okay. I love Jason no, Scott Lee. I not hope at he's all. Well, we will definitely get him on. But we have Plan Z, which is okay. something this is long overdue. We have a new member of Cosmos, and people are seeing him everywhere. He's doing a ton of shows, a ton of work. He's all over the social media. And we've never properly actually given him an introduction to all right. the fans. And right. I think that, I think it was getting awkward. It was like if, if you go downstairs and your parents have brought a, a guest and they're having dinner for like six weeks and they never introduce you to that guy who's sitting there at the table, it would be awkward. It would be awkward. But we do wish the best to Jason Scott Lee, of course. Yeah. And um, I hope and, that we can get him on the show eventually. I do. I and, really do. Yes. Um, again, he's been very nice, very cordial with our correspondence. Again, I hope yeah. he's okay. I hope he's all right. Um, uh, Manny Zamora. And that's um, Plan Z. That's who we were just talking about. Z's, Z for Zamora. Uh, he has been our co-host on our Monday show, Two Guys and Sometimes a Gal Talking Movies. Mm -hmm. um, before that, he, I reached out to him because um, I, I had conversations with him before about comic books and movies and stuff like that before, before he even came on the Cosmos He's just an interesting guy. He's just a really nice guy, and he's an interesting guy. He's got a lot of uh, trivia and facts in his head that are just amazing. And um, so I actually asked him, would you like to come on uh, General Howitzer's Big Monster Briefing Room as a character? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's how it started. And uh, he was like, I would love that. <laughs> yes, and it's so great, too, because I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. So you're like, here, it's going to be Sergeant Havoc, whatever. And I'm right. like, okay. And I had no he idea. He came up with that name too, which I. <laughs> yeah, he came up with it. I had no idea what we were going to see. And he comes on and he's doing zingers. He's doing impressions. He's hilarious. He's witty. <laughs> and he looks great on screen. He's very photogenic, telegenic, I guess we should say for television. And I'm thinking, who is this guy and why hasn't he been, you know? And then at some point he's like, yeah, I think I could coast a, uh, you know, host a show. And he had this idea for creating two guys, which, mm -hmm. you know, talking about that movies, was a, a movie that was show. his idea. Yes. 
that was his thing um, to do that with you, Rory. And he starts hosting. And I'm like, first of all, he knows all of this stuff about movies and about pop culture mm -hmm. and all these all these things. And he's just really good at it. So then we started like having co then, then we started having him like co-host. And, he, and he's like co-hosting. And I'm like, what else does he do that we are not aware of? Like, I feel like this guy can do anything. Um, it's he's been one surprise person. after another. He's a welcome addition to the cosmos the universe. Yes, and look uh, at all that love pouring out in the in the in the uh, in the crowd. I mean, everybody hey, is so excited to see him. So let's go ahead and bring him out, uh, Mr. Manny Des Manny Zamora. <laughs> Get that name right. Yes. <laughs> People Hello, are very everybody. happy to have How are you, guys? sir. Welcome to another episode of Two Guys and Oh wait, I'm no. sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Big Monster Two Briefing Guys room. and no. a Gal guys. talking about Jason Scott Lee. <laughs> Two guys, a gal, a goat, a chicken. <laughs> Can we please <laughs> do a two Jason guys Scott on yes. Jason Scott Lee? We I will. Think. You've got the pictures already ready. Uh, I've got the pictures. <laughs> Manny, yeah. I don't know if you I, can see how many people are calling out your name I, right I, now. I yeah. Being very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, many people are are happy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not happy that Jason wasn't here, but I am happy that this show is happening. I promise you, this is an amazing show. <laughs> so they they said, and David said, one step closer to the adult film, guys. Yeah, people have been seeing that one, TikTok. One step closer. <laughs> That's right. We're getting there. <laughs> Uh, one step closer. Oh, we, we're going to have to do a two guys and a gal talking about uh, the porn industry. That would be <laughs> that, that would be an interesting uh, show. That would be our that would be our highest rated and last. Ron Jeremy, we'll, we'll, yeah. deep, we'll do deep throat. <laughs> we'll do, yeah. Yeah. Psycho. Yeah. You know what we got to do? We got to do um. What was her name? The deep throat. I read both of her oh, memoirs. Um, Linda Lovelace. Linda, Linda Lovelace. Lovelace. She wrote two Linda memoirs Lovelace. about yes, that. She was... And fantastic story about her life and how she got into that. And it's actually yeah. really tragic and awful, but um, of how that happened yeah, to her. Yeah, but she, she, she said they were holding a gun to her head. They when she hold, was held a gun yeah. to her yeah. head yeah. off of the stage the whole time she was doing all of that stuff. So actually she was abducted and kidnapped. And I'm, I'm like, I'm laughing because yeah. I'm nervous. She was abducted. She was kidnapped. She was trafficked. Um, and so she now she talks at length about all that. But that's that's something that we could talk about in a show yeah. about the industry. And I think yeah. that would be a really um, a great thing because now, you know, there's ethical porn and people say, what is that? And and they're trying they're, they're trying <laughs> to clean up porn. They're trying to clean up the industry so that it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, the yeah, the adult industry or adult industry is sort of the 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 red redheaded stepchild of the movie industry even though it's a billion dollar industry it makes more money than anything hollywood puts yeah. out uh <laughs> no pun intended yeah. uh, <laughs> you mean popcorn and yes jamie is, is correct to say yeah. that popcorn. when we did the TikTok of this uh, we, we had corn stalks and yeah that's right <laughs> Corn it's corn. Stops. It's it's. I, oh, I missed that one. I missed that gotta, one. Uh, you gotta see that. You gotta see it. When uh, when uh, General Howitzer did the uh, stuff here recently, uh, yeah. Sergeant Havoc had a <laughs> comment about you know there's a scene where Andrea uh, or Andrea Markovici has a face full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Havoc said to me about that was know, ethical porn, money right shot, there. Money shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, originally, there's an entire there's an entire Howitzer episode that basically is just just one in inappropriate uh, zig after another. Yeah. The what, original, the, what the audience doesn't know is that <laughs> we usually come in early and we'll just be hysterical laughing at each other just goofing around and we'll stay on for 15 20 minutes after the show just chatting and, and yucking it up right um, yeah, yeah. because manny has a lot of fun to talk to um, oh gosh the three you get the three of us together and it's just it's, it's wild and crazy like and it's kids. insane yeah it uh, yeah havoc was originally going to say something about whoa whoa i didn't know this training film was going to turn into a bukkake video but <laughs> I didn't want to have been waiting weeks to say now. that. Yes, just waiting. <laughs> to throw that bukkake in there. I know, but then I thought, 
then I'm going to have to explain what that is. And that's not a conversation that I want to have. I will tell you that when I was at, when I was at Oxford, I was at Oxford University and one of my it's classmates, Japanese. Uh, that's all you need to say. One of my classmates used that term with me over and over again. And I was like, what is it? And he was like, I can't tell you so but it's so funny that you don't know and then years later my best friend told me he's like Renee I gotta tell you what that means it's not Kabuki theater it's not Kabuki theater Renee. It's something because I would because I thought it was a type of Kabuki, Kabuki theater. theater I thought you know I was like oh that's the thing where they use the little and, the, and so the mask, eventually, yeah, yeah, eventually well, my best friend was like Renee I gotta talk a little guy on the side with a little bing 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 bing, bing, bing. Oh. I just, I just love how eventually I was pulled, I was pulled aside. Like, no, Renee, it's not movie theater. (laughs) From the creators of tentacle porn. (laughs) (laughs) It's Bukaki theater. (laughs) Oh. So yeah, see what a, happens when we get together. Uh, anyway, I will say this: so Sergeant, so Manny comes up for that show at, uh, or or whatever as Sergeant Havoc, and he put as his tagline "sex magnet," which yeah. made sense because we were. T- so then, when he it's logged back in there. to do two guys, which was the movie show, he wasn't Sergeant Havoc anymore, but he kept that tagline by accident. So we did the whole yeah, two yeah, guys. Yeah. Of course, he was Manny as yeah, the sex magnet. <laughs> He's still a sex magnet. I didn't, know, I didn't notice that yeah. until, you know. And, yeah, and, and about Roland, I just wanted to say that, yeah, the guy, guy, you know, Roland, he's, he is a sex magnet. He's, he's you know, you know he's just swimming in poon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. Oh my gosh! You you, you know oh my man. gosh! What kind of show that I just stumble into? Uh, oh stumble into what am I a part of now? What um, am I, you're in the cult. We've I'm, inducted I'm, you into I'm the cult. In the Cosmos cult. Yes, there is a Cosmos cult, you know, and oh, it's a, but it's a fun one. It's we're yeah. we're nicer than some it's of the other ones. It's a small ones. one, but it's a fun one. There's no um, Jim Jones. There's no Jim Jones. Oh, good, good, yeah. yeah. No, I, no crazy Kool Aid. No, um, <laughs> No, we saved that for a decade down the line. You're, you're good for a good 10 years. We yeah, I'm a little suspicious of the peach tea, though, so I don't know about that. There's something going on with that peach something tea. Something going on with peach Yeah. There's, there's Jamie's something. breaking a rib here. That's and good. That's a good sign. <laughs> See, it's a fun this, show. This should be a show, because what ends up happening on Two Guys is somewhere towards the last 15 minutes, one of us just says something crazy, and then the rest of us just go off. And we go. Off. We just, That's what happened the last show. We were supposed to be yeah. talking about Tim Burton, and we got off on like a fifteen or twenty minute tangent, yeah. and went over yeah. 15, 20 minutes yeah. about something. Yeah, I can't even remember what it was. It even matter, was laughing. And then one show we were talking about. We got off on Bill Cosby. Oh, now that one. Now that one. They were doing dual Bill Cosby's because they both can do his voice, and You're I was right. dying. <laughs> It was Stay hilarious. away from the Tootsie Pop. <laughs> <laughs> if you take the roofie, it's going to go much of the I promise you, the show <laughs> in the it's going to be it's going to be a different kind of night. Uh, <laughs> I like how. See, here's the thing about Bill Cosby: it starts <laughs> off sort of decipherable, and then it just always descends into him just gurgling. Have you noticed that? Like, <laughs> no. or, and, and like the next no, week, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. like he's eating something. Like he's That's eating what a. Makes like, the impression <laughs> funny. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. see guys this is a better show and i love jason no no it's no, a better on, show no. it's a better show no no, no no come on now we gotta give we gotta give the guy his due he's, he's a right. wonderful actor and, and uh, there, there we go there, there we go bruce lee, looking bruce like lee story like... dragon the bruce lee story he was his kato yeah um yeah. which he actually played two iconic characters in that movie he played bruce lee and he played kato from the Green Hornet, so yeah. uh, how is that possible to do that? So that is awesome. yeah, so we got to play two great icons. Right. Uh, this, you know, I didn't even know this until this week when I started studying up on him. He was part of Biff's gang in Back to the Future That's Two. Sure, yeah. He played a character Ooh. named Whitey, and he does the skateboard. <laughs> he does the hoverboard yeah. thing. Yeah. And he was in uh, 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 Born in East L.A. Yes. Yeah. With Gigi Barron, man. It's Marine, yes. Marine. Ooh, man. <laughs> I always thought it was Marin. Marine. Marine. 
So and, there's doing the hoverboard thing, and of course, Jungle Book, Mowgli. Yeah, one of the, those early. Now, yeah. uh, uh, they've done another Jungle Book since then, right? Live action. Yeah, yeah. W with Christopher Walken as giant orangutan, <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. The Bill Murray one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we pay a blue pair. And of course, I'll, t I'll tell yeah. you, yeah. you know, Jason Scott Lee plays a good villain. He really does. I wanted to talk about that with him. Uh, he plays a really good villain. He's in Soldier with Kurt Russell, too. Yes, yes. And he's, he's, a, he's a great villain in that. Yeah. He plays Kane 607. He's just like a robotic guy. Yeah. And he's just, uh, he's badass in that. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Um, if they ever, you know, and looking at that picture, if if they ever do another uh, Flash Gordon, he'd be a perfect Ming. Ooh, the Ming the Merciless, right? Right. You know, who I sent an invitation out to a couple of nights ago. Brian Blessed, he's still alive. Brian, the Blessed. Hawkman, the oh, Hawkman yeah. from from Flash Gordon, but he's done a zillion things. He's been Black yeah. Adder. Yeah, and he's been in a lot of. Yeah, he's just a lot. He's got the big booming voice. Yeah. So I want to get him on the show. Order and alive. So we, we've had people from England on this show before. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock, but come on, have some fun. Come on with us. Right. So I'm hoping to get him on the show. Oh, uh, that I also said, awesome. I also found Daniel Craig's uh, page. Ooh. And I sent him an invite. Uh, I was watching The Mummy, because we're going to do The Mummy on uh, uh, the Brendan Fraser one, oh, on okay. uh, General Howitzer in the very near future, oh, cool. a couple weeks. And uh, I was watching his wife, Rachel Weiss, in that. And it, just for some reason, it just said, look up Daniel Craig. See, would you see if you can find Daniel Craig's uh, contact information? <laughs> and I sent him an invite. I said, I was just watching The Mummy with your wife, Rachel Weiss. And I was just, something told me, reach out to him. Because he's he's kind of impulsive and kind of crazy. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, he did that little little cameo in uh, one of the Star Wars movies. He was uh, one of the stormtroopers. He was one of the stormtroopers. Yeah, I think he was in uh, Force Awakens. But he's really got a good sense of humor. I mean, anytime he's on Saturday Night Live, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's still uh, a lot of cast members from Flash Gordon. You know, Sam Jones, uh, well, Brian, Brian Blessed, Timothy, Timothy Dalton, Dalton uh, Richard O'Brien. Richard O'Brien, yeah, yeah. Rocky true Hall. enough. True enough. That was that was uh, okay. before Harry Potter. Uh, that was yeah. where all the British actors went to, to play. <laughs> flash, flash, oh, dum, 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 dum. Oh, he'll save every one of us. <laughs> um, I don't know whatever happened to uh, Melody Anderson, but uh, I, Melody Anderson, the, the right. Dale Arden, um, right? I know. Uh, was it Topol? Uh, Topol, I don't know. I yeah. he passed away. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah, yeah. so. Anyway, he was in Fire Rise. Oh, um, Max von Sydow. I, I, I forgot to mention Max von Sydow <laughs> because this is how we go. Max von Sydow was also Blofeld in Never Say Never Again. We were talking about James Bond. I correct. forgot to mention that. The Mistress Heroine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's an interesting Blofeld. Yeah. Um, He's a great actor. I love him. Yeah. Wonderful actor. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back to you now. Um, <laughs> Uh, what what they probably, what our viewers that? probably don't know, is that you are an artist and you yes. are you are doing a comic book now that you're writing. I am. And, Please uh, tell us about that. All right. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. While I pull up my cup that Diane Marie Call sent me. Yeah, and it's gorgeous with the uh, with the R there. Um, yeah, a few years ago I started a comic book. It's called <laughs> La Salvadora, and uh, it's about a. Uh, uh, a veterinarian who works at this private uh, like animal sanctuary and she becomes a superhero called the Salvadora who she and she saves animals from exploiters and animal traffickers and, and what have you and uh, yes. um, I just released issue number well officially it's issue number two but it's actually the third uh, volume uh, or issue and <clears throat> I'll be starting issue three here in probably a week or so. Um, so yeah, and if I'd known that uh, our guest wasn't gonna show up or, you know, uh, I would have had some samples. But um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I've, I've been drawing since I could remember, since I could hold a pencil. 
Um, and, you know, took art lessons and, of course, huge, just became a huge comic book nerd over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I've been drawing ever since. And I kind of toyed with the idea of, of doing comic books. But, you know, it's like John Lennon says, you know, life happens when you're making other plans. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got a job. I, I worked as a graphic uh, artist or graphic designer for a newspaper here in my hometown and uh, right. did that for about 30 years or so. Oh, wow. Finally, finally retired. And, you know, I had all this time and I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually work doing the comic book. Uh, you know, me and my partner at the time, uh, Janelle, we, um, we started a little, a little internet. Uh, we started writing uh, and drawing uh, children's books. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, she passed away last year um, from a long illness. But um, very sorry to hear that. Well, thank you. Um, very sorry for you for that. I should say. I, yeah. I knew it. I knew it. I wasn't going to breach the subject. I was. If you wanted to, I was going to let you. But yeah, yeah. But so, you know, so we have all our little children's books on on the internet and. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'm I'm gonna work on this comic book, and you know, like I said, I've got three issues, and uh, I'm gonna work on another one, and it's just something, you know, I'm finally, I, I can't say it was a fulfilling a dream, but it's it's certainly something that I that I've always wanted to do, and so now I'm, I'm doing it, and yeah. uh, I've also done. And a, there, the artwork is amazing, by the way. Everybody, yeah, just know. He is incredible at what he does. And um, yeah. I did want to ask you about, um, I wanted to ask where the animals, animal rights sort of angle came in. What is your relationship with animals? Why was that really important to you to get that sort of message out there for the storyline? Well, again, I've got to credit Janelle. Uh, she has an adopted daughter who's Hispanic. And she was saying that her daughter was saying that, you know, there weren't, many heroes, you know, I mean, they have Dora the Explorer, you know, and then that's about it. Um, I mean, there's a few more starting to, yep. starting mm -hmm. to show up, but, and it just kind of, uh, and plus she, she's the one, she loves animals and she's an artist as well. And she does mm -hmm. fantastic work drawing mm -hmm. animals and things. And I thought, you know, why don't we create, why are we waiting for somebody else? You know, yeah, yeah. We're, we're creative, we're artists. Mm -hmm. Let's do one ourselves. And so we started developing, developing this character and, you know, we said, we're going to make her Hispanic. She's a young woman. Uh, her costume is, is very modest. You know, she's not, mm -hmm. you know, showing her, her boobs or, or, or whatever. Yeah, like a, right. You know, she's not wearing like a bathing suit, like most right. uh, superheroines. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, and, and we decided, well, we're going to make her a professional. And we decided on a veterinarian, again, because of that connection with animals and things. And, um, and it just kind of went from there. Yeah. Now, Renee, was it, was it you that uh, sent that first issue of his comic book to me, or was it Dennis? Um, I can't remember. One I don't know. I have, I have it, me, too. Yeah, I have it, too. Yeah, one of the others sent me the, the first issue of it that you had it's, made. Yeah, and, and it's, asked me, it's striking. They, they said, what do you think of this? We want your opinion on it because mm -hmm. you do all, you've do you done art. Oh, and, that's right. Yes, it, it was me and, yeah, through Dennis. I mean, I, yeah. technically it was me, but it was from Dennis. Okay, Dennis all right. Because, because I, I Rory, remember Dennis was eye. part of it. Yeah, that Dennis yeah, was, because, um, was asking. Because, yeah, the reason why he asked that was because we know that you are an aficionado, you're a visual artist yourself, and you right, really yeah. are tuned into, and you've had scripts, I mean, you've had movies made out yeah. of your scripts, um, yeah. but the other reason is that you know all about the comic book, you know, Dennis and I really don't follow that, so we knew that this would be an independent reaction for somebody really just looking at it and saying, this is what is this, you know, and you were so positive about it. You, I, I really you liked very it surprised. again. I, when yeah, I, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is, this is really nice. I mean, I think they're onto something here. And mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I liked the, the, the animal angle. I liked the Hispanic angle. Uh, um, uh, the, the girl uh, is Mexican. Um, yeah. Mexican American. Okay. Yeah. Mexican American. I, <clears throat> it's been a while since I've read it. Um, 
and yeah, I think she was up against hunters in the first right. the yeah. first yeah. issue. Yeah. And, and again, I just really like the the concept of it. And the yeah, artwork was great. nice. It was very colorful. Thank you. And yeah. I said, yeah, I can I can see this uh, definitely. And uh, I and I remember audience. too, and I want to put this out there. My best friend Edison, he's Brazilian American, and he is a graphic artist, and he's into all of the same stuff. In fact, he watches two guys now, and he watches how it's <laughs> Um, and it's, and it's really funny. And, uh, anyways, he has some medical things going on and he told me that mm. if he gets cleared medically, he'll be so shocked that he'll actually come on one of our shows because he's oh. very behind the scenes. Cool. But I remember, um, cool. yeah. He, yeah, he's working on, and, and it's a long, it's, he's taken a long time with it. Um, mm -hmm. but he's working on a whole, a, a graphic novel series that yeah. features mm -hmm. a, um, Hispanic girl who again is very normal. She's she's not with the busts everywhere, you know, very humanized. Um, he had me work on that with him to make her like he would say, What do adolescent girls do? You know, and I would say, This is what we do, you know. And he would say, make it authentic. He said, I don't know what girls do. Um, and he he puts the Spanish in there and, and she's in Miami, and it's very, very nice. much in the culture because that's his culture and yeah. you know he's tired of seeing he's tired of seeing the same cookie cutter white culture over and over and over again right. um, yeah. and and so i sent that back then i remember when dennis said i said well i'll send it to edison as well and he just said and edison is so critical of everything he is a negative nancy he is pessimistic <laughs> and he saw this and he was like oh my gosh like this should be out there today and it's going to make movies and there's going to be a TV series on it. Like he was just <laughs> over the top um, oh. and, and he's an expert in this field. Like so yeah. for me being impressed, I said, well, okay, I'm impressed. But Rory <laughs> being impressed, Edison being impressed, I said, okay, this is top notch. So like, where are you going to go with this Manny? Because there's an audience for it. The culture needs this. Um, do is it? Are you envisioning it going to Hollywood and having it um, turned into a feature film or a series or a Netflix? Or what are your plans for this? Uh, all of the above. <laughs> tick, 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 yeah, tick. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want it to be, you know, yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. that's, you know, I mean, it wasn't, I, you know, I can't say, oh, that, that's the ultimate goal. You know, I mean, I, I, I just want it to be a good, comic book series but oh i'd love i'd love it to be a, a movie or, or a netflix series you know i mean i i watched uh uh neil gaiman's sandman here recently uh mm -hmm. and holy cow i mean I, I i love the show and of course i was a fan of the comic book his his, his comic book um and another big influence on me as an artist uh speaking of comic books are the hernandez brothers uh and their and their series uh love and rockets um they have a very clean style and and again it's set in a in a, a hispanic community and a lot of hispanic characters uh i think they're working out of i think they work out of austin so mm -hmm. so they're kind of local to me um so yeah um, what I what I really love world. about this, yeah, <laughs> what I love about this, and with with women too, um, um, underrepresented minorities. I think what it takes is just um, having minorities, women, African Americans, you know, immigrants, uh, Hispanic Americans, all of this stuff, um, Latino Americans, because of course Brazil is not Hispanic. Edison always reminds me that, so that's they Latino. Latino not with Ghostwriter too on. Uh, yes, Marvel I was going to mention that. Yeah. Yep. I was going right. to mention that it's just having more because, for example, I got I, I went off on somebody today and in a pleasant way. I wasn't mad, but for example, um, in Seinfeld, okay, I, which is my one of my favorite sitcoms of all time. I'm obsessed with it, but it's so quotable. And Elaine's lines, you know, were written by male writers, and that really showed. And so I was talking to somebody today, a man, and I was explaining to him all the places where they missed the actual female experience. Now you've got, you know, um, Tina Fey's writing stuff, you know, Amy Poehler's writing stuff. You have so many yeah. women and it shows because finally I can relate to the scripts. You know, female characters are right. actually saying what females say. And, right. um, and so Manny, for you to step forward or for Edison to step forward and say, hey, this is a part of our culture. You're not going to tell us our culture anymore right that's got to be so accurate number one and and informative but also just empowering to actually claim a narrative yeah. and instead of being told what the narrative is because 
you know, Hollywood. Well, myself being Eastern Eastern European, even in acting classes, they would take one look at me and say, okay, well, you're going to be the femme fatale because you look Russian, you know, just no matter what you do, you're going to, that's the villainous right. thing. But, yeah, um, yeah, been a, yeah. Just no matter all what the, you do, you, you, you can't get out of that. Right, yeah. Right, and Hispanic Americans, you know, what, it was like, you know, all of the nefarious uh, characters. Now we're breaking out of that because the people in charge are Hispanic Americans. Yeah. They are the ones now who are controlling that narrative. And it's like so healthy. And you're a part of that, Manny. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We were talking about, we did a show on Sinbad the Sailor. Uh, and of course, you know, ripping on, on Mr. Sinbad the Entertainer as well, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we meant no offense. You know, we, this is our blanket did. apology it's because blanket we love apology, him. You know, we love you, show, Sinbad. You know, then we learn that, you know, you have a series of, Strokes. Medical issues, yeah, Medical yeah. Issues, yeah, yeah, and we love and, him. You know, so so we meant no, we meant no disrespect to Mr. Sinbad, um, but yeah, one of the movies had Anthony Quinn in it, who who is a very well respected uh, Mexican actor, um, mm -hmm. and the thing I failed to mention when we were talking about the show is how, and of course, it's a product of the time. You know, it was made in the forties. And everybody, all the male characters are in this heavy brown makeup, even even Quinn. Uh, mm. You know, they had a brown face to make them look uh, uh, Arabic. And yeah. I thought, you know, that kind of made me cringe a little because, but, you know, I still I think, okay, well, you got to take into account the, the times. But still, you know, and I started thinking about uh, actors like Anthony Quinn and, and you know, some of the other uh, Hispanic actors, uh, actors at the time, you know, and a lot of Mexican actors wound up playing anything but Mexican. <laughs> you know, they <laughs> Indians, yeah. they played, uh, you know, uh, both, uh, you know, American Indians and, you know, Indian Indians, uh, you know, pretty much any nationality but their own, you know, and then you had white actors playing other nationalities you know, when I mean, you have you know Chuck Connors playing uh, Geronimo, you got John Wayne playing Genghis Khan, you know, and and probably the most offensive one. And you know, I love Breakfast at Tiffany's, I, I you know, because I love Audrey Hepburn. But oh, but the but every the time Mickey Rooney, I see Mickey Rooney, Mickey Rooney, that's what inspired the, Bruce yeah. Lee to become Bruce yeah. Lee, right? Because yeah. it was so offensive. To well, him. that was one of the things I was going to talk to Jason Scott Lee about. Uh, yeah. Was that scene in Dragon where it's they're watching awful. Breakfast at, at Tiffany and his wife is laughing hysterically and she looks over at him and he just looks like yeah. it's really I can't disturbing. This. this is this is this is wrong. Yeah, um, and I wanted to ask him how he felt about that. One of the things that he did uh, not too long ago was a documentary uh, <laughs> with director Jeff Adachi uh, called "The Slanted Screen," mm. uh, which was about Asian actors and their involvement in Hollywood and, right. and movies and yeah. TV and stuff. And I really want to watch that. I'm going to have to look it up, uh, try to see if I can find it somewhere and watch it. And I wanted to ask him about that and uh, you know how that came about and, and right. how it went. Yeah. Um, I think uh, about, you know, I, I remember growing up and watching, you know, Charlie Chan, you know, right. And Warner you know, Olin, Olin. Warner Olin made it, a, made it a point in his interviews to say, Oh, I just squinted my eyes real tight. That's all they did. Yeah. There was no makeup. Yeah. I mean, they had, Laurie. yeah. And they had some Chinese actors, you know, like number one son who would yeah, go Key on. Luke. Key Luke yeah, was Key one Luke. of the number one sons. Uh, Laurie, yeah. Who would go uh, on. And what's but, yeah, Charlie Chan was almost always played by by like by a, 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 a an anglophile. Yeah, uh, even Ross Martin. They were looking to do a TV show, uh, and Ross Martin from Wild Wild West was going to play Charlie Chan, and Bruce Lee was supposed to be his number one son in that. Yeah, and that fell through. I don't know yeah. why that fell through, but yeah. it, it fell through, and they ended up putting him on the Green Hornet. That's yeah. how he managed to get the the Kato part. Right, and uh, Bruce Lee. He also came up with uh, the original idea for Kung Fu, and he was right. going to entertain. But you know, the network said, hey, "No," and they they wind up with with David Carradine. David Carradine, which, you know, I mean, yeah. But still, yeah, it just and Key Luke again. Left. That's why he left. You know, the was US. the master in that. Yeah, and Key Luke, yeah, would eventually, yeah, 
Master Poe. Um, yeah, and that's why Bruce eventually left. Bruce, <laughs> like personal friend of mine. Uh, Bruce, you know, he left America and you know went to he Hong. He went back to Hong Kong. Yeah, went, went back to, to his Kong. roots. And when he Actually, got there, that's where he became famous. You know, he came uh, back. You know, his movie started showing up in the U.S. and everybody was like, "How come we never saw this guy before?" And it's like, "Oh, he was here all along, but you wouldn't cast him." You know, and I remember him. Uh, there's a very short-lived show with uh, James Franciosa, uh, you know, James Franciscus, called right. Long Street. Long Street, where, where he played the uh, his, uh, his teacher, his instructor. Yeah, played his uh, martial arts instructor. Martial yeah, arts instructor. Yeah. You know, I mean, not to get all biblical, but you know, there's a saying in the Bible about a prophet is not honored in his own in his own land. You know, and I think that's what, kind of what happened to Lee. You know, he just wasn't honored here, and he had to go. Well, somewhere. when he went back, he was. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, we, back. Call the, we call the Green Hornet the Cato Show. <laughs> yeah, they, they oh, loved him when he came back, right. and they were nice I, to work, yeah, work with him. Yeah, I watched it for him. You know, more than uh, you know Van Williams. So, yeah. um, um, <laughs> uh, if you, if you look at Jason Scott Lee's, uh, Facebook page, he's got a lot of respect for those guys, for Jackie Chan, for Lee Jin Jie, who's Jet Li over here, uh, for, uh, Donnie Yun, um, Yun. who played Ip Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's got a lot of respect for the Hong Kong, uh, Kung Fu actors. Mm -hmm. Um, there was Chow Yun Fat. Chow Yun Fat, yeah, is, is another one. Uh, I don't, I didn't see anything about him on on the page. He hasn't done a lot lately. Yeah, um, he's been, yeah. Well, I think yeah, he's, he's got great respect for that and that kind of. Yeah. Cinema. I think he's kind of retiring. He and, he and Jet Li are kind of going back. Jet Li has said he's getting too old to do the stunts and the stuff and the, yeah. the martial yeah. arts, and he's he's pretty much not doing that kind of thing anymore. He does want to continue acting. Uh, yeah. But uh, but he doesn't want to do the martial arts anymore. He just yeah, he's too old for it. Yeah, yeah, um, I mean they're they're getting up there in years. Yeah, but, he just uh, did a movie uh, for the guy, the Alibaba guy, Jack Ma, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, before you know the government cracked down on Jack on Jack Ma. Mm -hmm. um, they made a movie uh, together, yeah. and he, again, it was a it was more of a philosophical film, I think. Uh, that's what the posters made it look like, anyway. Or not like, who's the guy? Who's the guy who did On Bach? Is that him? No. Uh, well, what can't I remember his name? Uh, <laughs> yeah, On Bach was a series of of, uh, of martial arts films as well. Oh, okay. And uh, anyway, the the actor is just terrific. And talk I'm not familiar with those. Very. Oh, if you get a chance, you got you got to look these up. Uh, yeah. There's a, um, there's a very famous scene where he has this fight up the staircase, and it's it's all just done in one take, and it's oh my god, it's it's terrific. Um, anyway, yeah, we'll do we'll do a two guys and sometimes a gal with where we talk about uh, our favorite uh, yes. kung fu. Our favorite kung fu or martial arts movies. Martial, martial arts. Movies. Oh yeah. Because you you've got you've got the Japanese martial arts too with the Sunny Shiba. And, yeah, <laughs> and, and that fair. Um, uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino's a big fan of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah, brought him, yeah he, he Kill, Bill in, Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he played two roles in that, two or three. So, um, what what is going to happen with Manny Samora in the future? I mean, what uh, what where where are we headed? Well. Um, right now, um, I'm working with, uh, with Dennis Tardan, Tardan on, uh, on a project that he's doing, uh, over on, on his channel. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I've sort of kind of helped him. I actually with... met you and Janelle through him. Yeah. 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 I, yeah we've known Dennis for a hundred years <laughs> for a long time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I'm. <laughs> so uh, I'm working with him, and uh, and um, of course, you know, working on the comic book. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably doing some other, some more children's books, 
Yeah. And um, and of course, all this all this silliness with uh, with two guys and, and Sergeant Havoc and mm -hmm. uh, maybe you know maybe there'll be some other shows as well in the in the in the future. Um, so yeah, so that's. Did Janelle leave you stories uh, for for the children's books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was always coming up with ideas, and she mm -hmm. had this whole notebook full of, full of story ideas. And oh, wonderful! So, uh, so I'm going to try to, you know, honor her, honor her legacy. Uh, there you go. Trying to actually finish those. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm where I'm heading, and you know. <laughs> And um, yeah. Well, we're ha well, we're very happy to 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 have you because um, there's all this other stuff too. Like, for example, um, we're working on something else behind the scenes presently, right? So we've been coming up with a lot of different notes for something extra. Yes, that that I'm really excited about, <laughs> and and Manny has just jumped in. You know, the thing about Rory is the thing that I'm seeing about Manny too. It's such a joy because both of these guys. You can throw anything at them and they can iterate and pivot and add right in the second. And I do want to tell this story. Rory, I told you that I wouldn't tell you this story on IC if Jason were here, but since he's not, I can tell this story, uh, <laughs> which is so there's a, and there's another, there's a little side project too that, um, that we're doing. And for the little side project, it was so funny because Rory was out at Denny's with his daughter and he's just hanging out. Manny, Manny's the same way here, but. He's out there at Denny's and he looks down at his phone and it's Renee, it's me. And I'm like, quick, I need a, a picture of you dressed like a douchebag bag character who's caught off guard. Like you're upset that you got caught off guard. You're a total douchebag. Can you do that? And literally it wasn't a full minute. Like it wasn't a full minute. It was before I even logged out of the app that he just sends me two pictures and they were impeccable. They were perfect. They were exactly what I asked for. Because douchebags dress like everybody else. Yeah, and you go, <laughs> yeah. that's what I told you. I mean, at Denny's. <laughs> yes. And I saw the Denny's booth. And it was like this. I'm guy not gonna is... say that, but <laughs> it's, I always I always say that he's like Bugs Bunny. Oh, he's he's also had, we've also had shows too where someone will say, like, what about this as a prop or a character? And he just like Bugs Bunny, he just pulls down into his fur somewhere and he just pulls out like a globe, an astronaut. Like, if you want this, you look at he's like he's a genie. Me, yeah, teach us what we need, Doc. Yeah. yeah, this is what you want, you know. And I'm just like, what? And so Manny is proving himself to be this way too. And I had no idea. Like, I'll, like I, I'm about this other thing. I'm like, hey, I need you to do this and have this character do this. And then boom, like, I'll just have it in my inbox. And I'm like, really? <laughs> They're both genies. Like, they, we should get you dressed up like I Dream of Genie with the little midriff showing. And the... No. <laughs> yes. No, no. I would pay to see that. I would be like, okay. Boom, boom, boom. It is just phenomenal. So it's so great to have you, Manny, because I feel like we have such a such a such a great talent that I didn't know existed. And then of course so fun too, because you could be as talented as you want to be, but if you're a total asshole or you know, no one wants to work with you or spend time with you, but but they I've know got that problem sometimes. Well, work no, with you don't. Longer, <laughs> don't worry, keep just just wait around a little you're, bit, Renee. Yeah, right? I think I was such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> What a total asshole! What a oh my god! You know, not telling you, folks. Asshole. <laughs> my god! Why am I working with this asshole? Oh, I, I just hate him. I I want want you. I, you know what? Oh. Both of you are so talented. Even if you were assholes, I would just deal with it. Like I, would, I feel like I would just deal with it. <laughs> well, because, that's how I feel you, now. I think. <laughs> It's he's like an a, asshole, but by God, he's talented. He's, at least he's talented enough. You know? <laughs> he's talented. he brings a lot to the table, that <laughs> asshole. That's great. And we have another shout out to Manny, too. Yeah, it was so great to have this show because it was long overdue. And we've learned so much about him. And, yeah. you know, how can people like here's the real question. I know Roy touched on it a little bit, but for anyone who's just joining us, like how can people keep up with your art of course they can follow cosmos for all of the uh all of the tv work that you're doing um but for your visual art can people just google your name or how do they get the children's books how do they get all of the other stuff all right all right uh <laughs> here's a it's the part of the show where we do our shameless plug let's uh, do the let's do the, let's plug, do yes. the shameless plug yes all right um yes our wrong website, way. Our website is www. JanelliBean.com. 
It's uh, J A N E L L Y B E A N dot com. And all our children's books are there. Uh, my comic books are there. Um, some some other stuff. Um, so yeah, if anyone's interested, just go to JanelliBean dot com, and it's all there. And uh, you know, and the proceeds from those sales will go directly to Manny's crack habit. Uh. Yes, yes, my, my raging <laughs> crystal meth habit, uh, or or as we like to call it, you know. Uh, Mothra dust. <laughs> Mothra dust. Well, and I have another question before we go because I really you wanted to fly. ask. You can fly. You can fly. I can fly <laughs> twice as high. I wanted to ask you guys this question since, you, since Manny's oh, Manny is now hosting shows. That's really funny, actually. I love that. Um, Manny's now hosting shows, but uh, Rory, I've never asked you this question either. Who were some of the talk show hosts that you guys grew up really uh, applauding and looking to? Um, and now when you guys are hosting shows, like who do you have in your head that you would like to, you know, is it Jack Parr? Is it Carson? Uh, Carson for sure. Uh, uh, Dick Cavett for certain. I mean, wow. Nobody could interview somebody like Dick Cavett. He got John and Yoko at the height of John and Yoko. Yes. You know, he was the one that they chose. They they yeah. said yeah. that was the only one he would they would do. As long as there's crap, people will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and he says it a lot more eloquently than I just did. Uh, yes. yeah. One right. of the best interviews I ever saw Cabot do was uh, with Robin Williams at the height of his. Oh movie. wow! Oh, Jeez. Wow. Holy yeah. cow! Such a good interview. That's uh, so good. So yeah, for me, Carson. You know, I mean, uh, goes without saying, Carson was was the, was the king. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I did not know that. I, I <laughs> did not know that. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, sidekick, uh, Letterman. Yep, that's Dick who Letterman. I was usually watching. Was Letterman? I, I really grew up with, uh, mm. and I know. Yeah, I don't think he gets the respect that that he kind of deserved was at Arsenio Hall. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've watched a lot yeah. of that recently and I remember growing yeah. up with him too. He's done some incredible work. Yeah. And, so. and before he, uh, before he fell from grace, uh, Charlie Rose was another one. Yeah. That I, uh, that I enjoyed watching. Um, I like Craig Ferguson. Oh, oh shit. God. That was yes, okay. That's that my technical time. favorite. I always forget yeah. because to me he was on a, oh my God. Let, me, let me tell you my Craig Ferguson thing, which was I didn't even know he existed. This must have been maybe his first or second season. And I was just going through the channels and I saw what I thought was a stand up comedian. You know, he used to do really long monologues. So yeah. I see this guy, this Scottish guy, doing this really long, uh, you know, stand up act or what I thought. And I said, who is this guy? He's the best stand-up comedian I've ever seen bar none my entire life. I've got to figure out what his name is. And then he goes and he sits down behind the desk and he has a show. And I said, I just won the lottery. I get to watch him every <laughs> single night. You mean you mean he's like, he's got his own show? And then it's I Craig said, Ferguson. Craig, yes, Craig. Craig. he's so good. Then, yes. Because he had it. Because yeah. he was just as, he was hilarious, silly, and funny. And then poignant. Yeah. He Very could do it all. And, oh, Whenever he had some some act, you know, he had these actresses on and so flirty and so talk, you know, oh. talk about innuendos. <laughs> yes, he was so funny and so warm and so likable. Yeah, and everybody just felt so safe with Very him, and he would always honest. start every he would start every interview by you know ripping up the the note yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah, we don't need just gave him that little. We don't need that. We're just gonna <laughs> yeah. fuck around and uh, and oh, and I didn't. He, of course, me being a who big huge Whovian, big Doctor Who fan. I didn't know that Craig Ferguson was in a band with Peter Capaldi. I didn't know I, that either. I, I knew he was a drummer, but funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was, he was a drummer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so they toured around together and <laughs> according to Ferguson, did a lot of drugs together. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm like, <gasps> Peter Capaldi. <laughs> it's funny too, because the only guy that we have on this network that I thought reminded me slightly of Craig Ferguson was is Tom Cheshire. So yeah. when we when we came to do the second season or the, so the third season of Burn It Down, I said, I'm going to do a Craig Ferguson intro because Craig Ferguson's intro was him 
playing the drums and singing his own theme song and then right. being downtown, yeah. um, being downtown with all the urban stuff. And yeah. I said, I'm going to get that footage. And I got that footage from Tom and I had Tom with one of his, his songs, burn it down. And I put all that together and I, and, and I'm really proud of it because it reminds oh, me okay. of the Craig Ferguson. The Craig Ferguson. Um, okay. Yeah. I see it. I see it now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that was why that intro. That was um, your, that was your homage. To, that was uh, my Craig homage Ferguson. to Craig Ferguson. Exactly. Oh, and, and cool. Yeah. Right. I'm always thinking to, of Craig Ferguson. I have to Ferguson. give an honorable mention to, to Conan. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Conan and Brian. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a big deal for me when he had his initial show. I didn't watch him when he went to uh, TBS or whatever, actually. But yeah. yeah, his initial show meant so much to me because it was a small group of people, and Andy Richter and he were just Andy so Richter, great together. Yeah. Um, and I, I loved everything about Conan, especially back then. And the character he did weird. He would push bound comedic boundaries. Yeah, that were just like the masturbating bear, you know, like well, what the he fuck? he was a he, writer he was, for The Simpsons, and then he was a writer he was a writer for Saturday Night Live, and mm -hmm. even he admitted when he you know, the, you know the press came to him and found out he was the replacement, you know, for that show. He goes, ah, you know, nobody knows who the hell I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm the first one to to, to tell <laughs> people that. that. Yeah, I know you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's very likable and he did go to harvard and um you know he he, he just went on stern recently Ooh, and it's an harvard. amazing yeah it's an amazing interview and he talks about how he was insecure his whole life he never felt he could ask for anything he was never a confident person people thought he was but he wasn't and he said and you know i always remember on the show people would mention you went to harvard and he would always push it under the rug and i always wondered why he did that and he explained it on stern he said People think that if you went to Harvard or you're intelligent, you can't be funny. It's not mm -hmm. self-deprecating enough. You're suddenly like the man and, and people won't <laughs> like me. So he would always try to like hide that fact about him. But he's actually really brilliant. And like you said, but, you, uh, you went to Harvard. <laughs> monorail. <laughs> he did the monorail show of Simpsons episode. That was all Conan. Yeah. Monorail, monorail, monorail. Anyways. <laughs> That's, yeah. It's one of my favorites. Is really good, but uh, yeah. So there's actually so many of them. Um, James Corden, of course, is is calling it quit and quits. And I actually have never seen James Corden except for Carpool Karaoke because those right. are you know. Right. And he and he seems absolutely wonderful. But I just I have to admit that I've never I never saw him. Is he? What was his interviewing style like, or what is it like? Um, um, again, I've only seen the Carpool Karaoke. Yeah, that's how um, I know him. And I, I I read stories that uh, that he is one for pretty rude when they go out and about uh, like to restaurants and stuff. So uh, so he's not um, like as nice of a he's as a guy. he's not an approachable guy. He's not very nice when it comes to dealing yeah, with people I, at like I restaurants and things. People in England actually hate him. <laughs> Do they really? Yeah, okay. Well, right, then maybe right. it's maybe I haven't lost anything by not right. seeing him. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I've seen clips of him, and and I mean, he seems. On the show, at least, he seems very affable, and you know, he asks questions, and mm -hmm. you know, he lets the guests, you know, uh, say whatever. And um, no, he seems really nice on, on the show. Yeah, and, he seems yeah, extremely nice really, when he does the carpool karaoke. Oh yeah, he seems I love like them. such the yeah, best friend. Yeah. And uh, I saw recently they posted the, what's supposed to be the last one, and uh, with with Adele and Adele and here are apparently really close friends, mm. and. You know, they, they both got really weepy at the end, but Aww. those are my favorite ones. I, I saw the, the original one that, that was, I'm a huge Adele fan too. Oh, okay. And so, and so them singing together is great. And then, you know, she's, she's there at the end. Uh, in fact, she comes and picks him up for work and uh, drives him to, <laughs> and she's like, I'm not a very good driver. I just, I just, I just got to warn you. <laughs> it's like, Oh my God, I'm going to die on the way to the studio. <laughs> I, he also did um, Paul McCartney, and I've seen that several times because yeah. that episode is amazing. The they go to one. Paul McCartney's you know, yeah. childhood home, and it's it's absolutely amazing. Like I said, like it's something you want to watch more than once. So he left something great to the culture, if, yeah. if just for that alone, you know. It's not, it's not up there with Conan driving with Wayne Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that. Oh my god! I'm gonna go Google look that. that up. You gotta look that up. I gotta look. That I'm up, Wayne yeah. Brady, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Sorry about that. Yeah, you, you, 
yeah, you, you got to see it. <laughs> well, and that reminds me. There's, and Brady, yeah. Well, we should think a little bit out of the box, too, because when I'm talking about it, Jerry Seinfeld technically entered this realm when he did Comedians in Cars getting coffee. Yeah. He does yeah. sort of do a, a dialogue, and he's had, you know, Larry David and Sarah Silverman and Chris yeah. Rock, and he's had some very interesting conversations, yeah. I would say, on that. So yeah. he's uh, thrown his... Uh, He's given his shot to that, too, and I think he's done a pretty good job. But it's not easy. You know, that's the thing, yeah. too. I want to ask both of you guys. Um, and, and Rory, maybe not as much you because you were you were doing it's casual actually a long time ago. But Manny coming into it more recently, was there anything that is surprising you or like you're struggling with as a host when you actually have a guest on? Because you've done a couple where, you know, you're one of the actual hosts. Um, no, I you know, I'm, I'm so new to this. I, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's a good I, I'm, thing. I'm, I'm too dumb to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so, so no. Uh, and, you know, really the shows we've done, it's mainly just Rory and, and I, and of course you, you're our gal. Um, so mm -hmm. we really haven't had guests on two guys and, and, uh, and a gal. Um, but you did get to co-host on um, I, off stage, and I, I, I have, yeah, and uh, and then now here, and mm -hmm. of course the Havoc show. We had the last one we did. We the Havoc show. Oh my God, I've taken I've taken over. <laughs> it's the Havoc show now. It's like it's Urkel. Havoc's it's like when Urkel takes over. Yep. I love I'm, it. Yeah, I'm gonna start wearing suspenders. No. <laughs> we should have a uh, off, like John on John. the General Howitzer show. Uh, we had uh, Julio on. Um, so that was my first okay. time actually being with somebody else. So, um, but yeah, no, I, you know, I, I'm, no, <laughs> I don't you know, know that. Who said, said. You know who said exactly what you said? Uh, I think it was Dick Cavett was interviewing Orson Welles back in, mm. you know, the seventies. And uh, Cavett said to him, like, what made you such a great director or whatever? And Wells said, I had no idea what I was doing. I I still feel like making a movie you can learn in a day and a half. And that's what I did for Kane. He said, I just taught, he said, I got the best um, cinematographer ever. And he came in and he spent a day and a half telling me how to make a movie. And he said, the only reason he would work with me is because he said, you're just a kid. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what not to do. And you don't know how to make a movie. I'll mm -hmm. work with you. Yeah. And yeah. he said, that's what it is. He said, he tells kids that all the time. He said, and then it was interesting because he predicted the future. He said, in the future, it's going to get easier and easier to make films. And you're going to see kids making better films than Citizen Kane and all of that. He said, but not knowing what you can and can't do is actually a, a benefit to you. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. When he, yeah. When that ember, it that was, interview. It was a great mm -hmm. interview. It was so well, great. Oh. Only but in his 20s when he did Kane. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And before that, of course, he was on radio. He had his, the Mercury. Oh, Club. yeah. <clears throat> the whole War of the Worlds thing, which was so cool. <laughs> when people thought it was real. And yeah. I've listened back to it recently because I used to laugh about it. And then I listened back recently and they do such an accurate job. I, I started looking over my shoulder <laughs> while I was watching right? and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Because they really did. I can see how this broadcast. would happen. Yeah. Yes. It's very, very convincing. You know, when I was in. It's funny talking about that. When I was in, I think it was in junior high or middle school, I think you call it now. Uh, one of our teachers, our English teacher, for Halloween, played us the record, the recording. Of, wow! You know, I, I heard of it, and of course, I saw the movie with uh, with Gene Barry. But uh, and to listen, just to listen, you know, and to yeah. think. But this was theater at the time. You know, this was before TV, before all this, you know, that this is what people listen to. And I could see how it would freak people out. Yes. To hear right. this. And and you know, the way I mean, yeah, they, they did a thing at the beginning where this is just a dramatization, blah blah blah, you know. But if but you tune in three in minutes in late, you're screwed. It, you're like, we're being invaded by Martians. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that time when I scared the shit out of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
It was I very submersive. It was very submersive and very, subversive. Yeah. You, you felt like you're a part of it. And I, again, I encourage people to go back and actually listen to it. Go back and listen Pinky, to it. It's let's on scare the shit out of the world. It's terrifying. <laughs> And they had no social media. They had no way to verify it. It's not like you could go to Twitter and verify whether or not you're getting invaded, you know? Now, you know, couldn't get away with that now. No, no, because it's, no, it's like yelling fire in a theater. It's just not, it's not great. The aliens are attacking the building. And now it's time for Lucky Strikes. (laughs) (laughs) The the commercials didn't tip them off. Come on. That is, that is true, you know. But I think most people, you know, they're doing dinner, they're doing their laundry, they're just sort of not listening. And then all of a sudden you're hearing this very authoritative yeah. voice. Telling you, <laughs> See, I told you he's Bugs Bunny. I told you he's Bugs Bunny. Rory, where do you, how many people really do, do that. They used to actually, in the middle of the show, do a commercial because it was all live, you know. Right. You know, it's like, but, <laughs> but before we go to that, here, you know, we're going to talk about. Lucky strikes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. It is really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking one for the team today. Uh, <laughs> you see, that was such a great show. People were, people, oh. I remember when we were the first half of this, you people got were your hour. So hard. <laughs> we we no, thought we were going to do a short hour. show. I knew. I just knew. I knew we were going to go over. I know because I have a 730. So I said, I got to be out of here by seven. I was like, guys, I got to be out of here by seven. And look, there's right. no way because it's, I, I I think that, you know, at some point we should, like somebody, I think it was David said, he was like, y'all need to have a show that's this so that you can just, just, get, just yakking. It's, yeah. it's so helpful. Welcome it's so to helpful. Shoot the Shit. Shoot <laughs> the Shit with Rory shoot and Maddie. Shoot the Shit with Rory and Maddie. Yeah. Wouldn't and it, I, I would watch, be, like, it's so I fun. Watch that show. <laughs> I would watch that show. I would, I would watch, watch that show. I would be out, do, you know. Who's going to shoot the shit with us tonight? There you go. (laughs) And you could ask the audience, like, what should we talk about? You know, know, it's just like hanging out and just deciding. Like a reality show now. (laughs) Well, we did have the Jersey Shore people. So we we do have reality reality show. Let me take my shirt off. You guys would have to take your shirts off. Strawberries. A lot of can we can we drop some f bombs? <laughs> he comes. On there are a and, lot of f bombs on that show. Holy it's like cow. the main thing that that they say. It's like every other word yeah. is that. But after a while, it's like yeah, it's just another word. <laughs> yeah. <It's> just, <laughs> thank you for being here, Jonathan. Thank you everybody for being here. Yes, we we were you. so grateful. Yeah, Jonathan Seven on the show. I got to introduce you to him. He's an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. let's have Jonathan Seven on the show. What about Six and Eight? Actor. Huh? Six and eight. What happened to six? <laughs> he hears that all the time. He's so done of hearing that. Uh, what you said? He's an. You said he's an actor. He was a scare actor. Yeah, I met him working at Skull Kingdom. Oh, oh. okay. I didn't he know. He was you guys one of their one other. of their big scare actors. Yeah, I mean, he did a lot of interesting characters there. Okay. Yeah. Why is he well, on the show? Get yeah. Why is he not show. on the show? I don't understand. Get him, get him we'll have to bring him on sometime soon. Cool. Yeah, we that actually tried to get him on the show uh, for a Halloween show, uh, not last year, but the year before. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, he had a bad connection. So he got on for a couple of seconds and uh, it kept, he kept dropping out. Uh, so it was a shame because, yeah, yeah, I would have loved to have had him on there with Sydney and uh, uh, Kim, Kim Donovan and, and some of the other people that we, you know, we had done scares together. So anyway. Again, thank you, sir, for coming on. And uh, you're welcome. And, and thanks for having me. Our Plan Z, <laughs> Plan Z <laughs> from outer space. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm disappointed that that Mr. Lee didn't show up, but uh, no, I, I. It happens, as I, they said at the beginning. It happens, yeah. and and hopefully he's okay, and yeah. he'll get back to me, and he'll explain what happened, and we'll right. see. So, All right, well, everybody, tune in to two guys and sometimes a gal on Mondays. And of course, uh, the, the Sergeant Havoc show on Thursday. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the Sex Magnet show. It's been rebranded as Roland and Sergeant Havoc and, and We're Sex going Magnet. to do The Fog by yeah. John Carpenter. And then Monday is all going to be John uh, Carpenter. With Ruby Ray Moore. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's yeah. my John Houseman impression. I don't yeah, even very do good. it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of scary. It's a little yeah. scary. That's why they hired him for the beginning of the film. 
<laughs> tell those stories. Oh man, because it's terrifying. Maps that gonna... watch me. I jumped. I mean, mm -hmm. that best jump scare. <laughs> Almost. And uh, keep an eye out, not just for those big monsters, but for the projects that we have coming up. Mm, right. Be, uh, right. Yeah. I'm very excited about all of that. So yeah, me too. These guys, these guys are amazing and they're so fun. So any chance that I get to to work with them, I do. Yeah. I'm down. And we love working with you too. Thank you. That's why I said it. I was wishing for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. And now I gotta go for real because I have a 7:30. But I love goodbye, oh. everybody. I know, but at least I got at least we got at least an hour. Yep. Bye, everybody.